right, the webinar is now live. Let me put it to Facebook. On the right page. Preparing live streaming preview. So give ourselves a moment here. And we are ready to go live. Okay. Let me put a title though first. All right, it looks like we are live, I hope. <laughs> We're having a message here that says, I don't see my own face on the screen. Is that a setting? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, we are live. So I'm going to shut it off of Facebook. So shut myself off. All right. <clears throat> so thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Anita Campbell, and I'm the founder and CEO of Small Business Trends Media. And of course, with me is the lovely Nellie Akel from CorpNet. Yay! And uh, we're going to be uh, actually uh, pushing this out to Facebook. We've already done that. So some people are looking on Facebook. Some people are on Zoom. So thank you for joining us. I'm going to start sharing my screen here a very, uh, very soon. So with that, let me share the presentation. And there we are. So today's session is Tax Advantages of LLCs, S-Corps, and C-Corporations. And so this is all about how you can save money on taxes through your corporate structure. And we have one of the best experts you can possibly have with us today. So I am like really super excited, but before we really begin, it's gonna be about an hour today. So Nellie is going to be talking for most of that time uh, because she's really the reason you're here to listen to her and she's got all the expertise. We'll try to leave some time at the end for question and answer. At the bottom of your screen, you should see a Q&A box. So please put any questions in the Q&A box as we're going along and I'll try to sprinkle them in as we go, or we'll try to get them at the end. I don't want to interrupt Nellie's flow very much, but if there's like something that I think is really relevant, Nellie, I'll jump in and ask it. But for the most part, we'll try to keep them to the end. So type them in. If you do not see your face, it's fine because this is a webinar. You're not going to see your face. You really should only see Nellie and me and mostly the slides. Uh, if you are on Facebook, Please put your questions in Facebook. I'll try to keep tabs over there and we'll try to include those. At the end, we have a special offer for you, a special discount, so stay tuned. So this is us and our companies. And let me introduce Nellie because as I said, we have one of the world's best experts on this topic and I wanna preface talking about Nellie's bio by sharing the story of how I met Nellie and how she met me. Is that okay if I share that, Nellie? You're making me emotional right now. <laughs> With everything going on in the world, it's like, 
Come on, Anita. <laughs> No, it was it was an absolutely fun time. I attended an event. This was like 10 years ago. You can yeah. believe it. Time really flies. And I was walking the exhibit floor and I saw this exhibit for Corpnet. And I saw this vivacious woman in there. She was in the booth sitting there and she had all kinds of files and things around her. And so I stopped to talk. And uh, long story short, she told me about CorpNet and she gave me like the two minute highlight of what the business was about and how they did it behind the scenes. And I was fascinated, absolutely fascinated by this. And so we got to talking and she shared with me that she's actually one of the pioneers in this whole field of online services to do business filings for incorporation. Uh, I won't mention the name, but Nellie started a very well-known company early on. One of the, I don't know if it was the first, but it was certainly one of the first and got it to success. And it was so successful. She sold it to a very big company who shall remain nameless. And uh, she then exited for a while and then some years passed and she started CorpNet. Is that a fair statement of, of the history and, and what we shared, Nellie? Yeah. It's accurate to the T, as always. I wouldn't expect anything else from you, Anita. <laughs> well, you, and I was just, I was so impressed. And we became friends just from that chance meeting at, at you know, talking to an exhibitor at a conference. So Nellie is an entrepreneur herself. She's the co-founder of Corpnet. Uh, with her husband. I, I don't know if there's anyone else involved. I know your husband is involved, so that's great. Uh, she's a business expert, as I said. I mean, you couldn't have a better expert than this. She speaks a lot. She writes a lot. She's great. She's a super communication, and she really helps other entrepreneurs. You won't find anyone as giving of her knowledge as Nellie. So she has helped more than half a million small businesses and licensed professionals get their businesses and clients off the ground. I think that's amazing, Nellie. Is there anything else you want to share about your bio before you take over here? Thank you so much, Anita. Hello, everybody. It's such a pleasure and most importantly, an honor to be co-sharing this amazing opportunity with the one and only Anita Campbell. Um, I, I'm humbled and honored at the same time. Um, and, and really, Anita said it, I, I really don't want to take much more time about talking about myself. The only other thing that I want to say is that I have been honored and blessed with the opportunity of being a content contributor to Small Business Trends. And I write for Small Business Trends um, on a monthly basis. You can see all my content there. And Anita and I are going to be doing a lot more together um, now that everything's kind of turned into this whole online um, arena of providing you and educating you with content. So it's a pleasure to be here. I cannot wait to share my expertise with you guys and help you guys in deciding what type of business structure is going to benefit you most for tax purposes. So without further ado, Anita, did you want me to go ahead and advance the slides? Well, let, let me do this because I'm not sure it's set up for another person to share. So how about I do it and you just tell me to forward them. How's that? Go for it. So we can okay. start when you're ready. Okay. Well, that would help if I can go ahead and <laughs> do the next one. <laughs> okay. So um, why don't we start with one, one, one slide back, Anita, if we can. Okay. Oh, okay. So let's go. We're, you were right. <laughs> okay. So um, today's agenda is going to be, my goal is to help you guys understand the tax advantages and disadvantages of business entities. Um, currently, I am the CEO and founder of CorpNet and how, you know, I'm connected to CorpNet and what CorpNet can do is that we are a nationwide document filing service whereby we help you with starting a business, whether it's incorporating, setting up a C-Corp, S-Corp, or an LLC, expanding your existing uh, business entity into other states, or helping you with keeping your business entity in compliance throughout the lifetime of your business. And as CEO and founder of CorpNet, my job is to help you navigate the ins and outs of the different types of business 
entities out there and what's going to benefit you as a small business owner. So specifically today, we're going to be talking about the benefits of business incorporation, uh, overview of C-Corps, S-Corporations, and LLCs, the tax advantages and the disadvantages. I'm going to talk to you about the Tax Cuts Jobs Act and how it's affected specifically C-Corps, S-Corps, and selecting an ideal business entity after you've been educated on the benefits, the differences between each entity. And now that you know all this information, which entity is best for you and is going to give you the best tax advantage? Um, steps to get started and then helpful resources. So let's get into it and let's talk about why um, it's beneficial for you, no matter how small of a business you are, to consider incorporating a business. And bottom line, it boils down to liability protection and asset protection. So by default, when you start a business or if you're thinking about starting a business, um, if you're a single business owner, by default, you're coined as a sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship meaning one person, proprietor meaning a person um, starting a business for profit. And by default, if you're two or more people starting a business, you're coined as a partnership. With a sole proprietorship or a partnership, there is no liability protection. There is no asset protection. You are the business and God forbid, if something happens, you wrong somebody or somebody comes after you and files a lawsuit against you and they get a judgment against you, that judgment is against you as that sole proprietor or partnership personally. And even with a partnership, it's even worse nightmare because now it's like having a marriage. So they can go after you, they can go after your partner, they can go after you guys jo jointly and severally. So as a sole proprietorship or partnership, if you have a house, a car, a savings account, a retirement account, if you own multiple properties, they can come after your assets. They can go after you personally and that judgment um, can be entered against you personally and they can go after your personal car, your house, anything you own personally. Now, a lot of business owners will come back to me and they'll be like, Nelly, I'm starting a business, but I don't have anything today. I, I, you know, I rent an apartment. I don't really own any assets. Well, guess what? A judgment can be entered against you and it can last up to 22 years against any future assets that you acquire. So it's not only about today. And even if you don't have assets today, that judgment can last and it can be entered against and be you know, held accountable for you and go after any future assets that you acquire for up to 22 years. So in light of how easy it is and how affordable it is to incorporate these days online and by no means I'm pushing you guys to use our company, even though I would love you to because we are the best in the industry. By no means I'm trying to push you to come and use our service. Just consider getting yourself protected and incorporated because first and foremost, you're gonna have liability protection against your personal assets. The other benefit is that by incorporating or setting yourself up as a LLC, you are separating yourself as the business owner from the business because by incorporating or forming an LLC, you are separating yourself and that corporation or LLC is a separate legal entity on its own with its own tax ID number. So by separating yourself from the business, people cannot go after you personally. It's like picture a balloon around you, a shield around you. As long as that corporation or LLC is being conducted lawfully and in compliance with state laws, you are separate from that business and you are protected from any liability and they cannot go after you personally. The other benefit is added credibility. By incorporating or forming an LLC, by having that INC or LLC next to your name, 
more and more people are going to want to do business with you. Why? Because they look at you of more of an established business. They look at you with more credibility. They look at you from taking the time to establish your business and they're likely going to look at you of more of an established business entity and they're going to want to do business with you. With a corporation or an LLC, there's also perpetual existence, meaning that God forbid, if you pass on, because the corporation or LLC is its own separate legal entity, it will stay on unless it's formally dissolved. Let's say you set up an LLC with multiple people and one of the members dies or something happens, that LLC will still remain in existence. Excuse me, I'm just going to shut this off. My apologies here. Um, in addition, there is tax flexibility with corporations and LLCs. We're going to be talking about that briefly. In fact, that with corporations, uh, and as a result of the uh, Jobs Act, um, there, corporations are now being taxed at a flat 21%. Um, so as a corporation or LLC, you're going to uh, likely have not only more tax deductions, but there's also more tax flexibility, and you're going to be able to deduct more expenses as long as they're business expenses as part of the corporation or LLC. So with that said, moving on to the next slide, where I'm going to go ahead and give you an overview of what the C corporation is, what the S corporation is, and what the LLC is. And um, so that this way you can have a little bit more education on the different types of business entities. So we've already covered the fact that by incorporating or setting up an LLC, uh, you're doing it first and foremost to really create a corporate shield around yourself and to um, gain that liability asset protection. Um, now we're going to talk about, well, what type of entity should I choose and what entity is going to be most beneficial for me and my business? As we talked briefly, um, the most simplest uh, type of business entity out there is the sole proprietorship partnership. And then we talk about C corporations, S corporations and LLCs. With the sole proprietorship partnership, as I mentioned to you, you are the business. There is no liability protection. There is no asset protection. There is no corporate shield. And um, although it's very, very simple to form, you can basically put up shop tomorrow and start being a sole proprietor if you're accepting money for your services. Um, but again, as a sole proprietorship partnership, there is no asset protection. Then we get into the separate types of legal business entities that provide you with asset protection, legal protection, uh, liability protection, which we start with the C corporation, most formal type of business entity out there. It's going to provide you with the ultimate uh, liability protection, asset protection. Uh, with C corps, um, C corporations are owned by shareholders. The shareholders basically in turn elect a board of directors who in turn elect officers who run the day-to-day -day operations of that corporation. With the C corporation, it's not ideal for a small business. Why? Because there's that concept of double taxation, meaning that the corporation, once it reports profits, it's taxed once at the corporate level. And then once the corporation distributes dividends to the owners of the corporation, which are the shareholders, the shareholders are taxed again on the individual level, thereby the whole concept of double taxation. In addition with a C corporation, because of it providing you with the maximum amount of liability and asset protection goes along with it, a lot of corporate formalities and paperwork. Corporations have to file annual meeting minutes. They have to uh, uphold and maintain bylaws, minutes, and resolutions. So lots of paperwork, lots of administration, but also along with it, lots of protection. Moving on to the S corporation, the S corporation, a lot of you think it's a type of corporation on its own. It's not. It's a designation that you attach to a C corporation. So the S corp is really a C corporation, but 
the shareholders of that corporation have filed what is called IRS form 2553 with the IRS to elect S corp status for that C corporation. Now, what does that do? For shareholders of a C corporation that qualify by electing S corporation status, that S corporation is now looked upon, that C corporation, my apologies, that C corporation, now that it has S corp status, is now looked upon as a pass through tax entity. What does that mean? That means that that C corporation now is avoiding being taxed doubly. It's now being taxed once at the individual level. So the C corporation by electing S corporation status now becomes a pass through tax entity where all the profits and losses are now taxed once they're flown through and they're taxed once at the individual shareholder level, thereby avoiding double taxation. So what is the S corporation? It's a tax designation that's given to a C corporation, but there is strict guidelines as to who can qualify and meet the requirements of the S corporation and whether that C corporation is going to be approved and uh, be looked upon as an S corporation for purposes of taxation with the IRS. Now, the question becomes, what are those requirements? Well, the requirements are pretty strict. All the shareholders of that corporation have to be either residents or citizens of the US. And you have to have only one class of stock. Um, you, can have to, you can only have up to 100 shareholders. And that election has to be made within 75 business days of that corporation coming into existence issuing out shares or starting to do business, whichever happens earlier. Now, if you miss that deadline, don't worry. There is this whole thing called March 15th. And if you miss that deadline, then existing corporations who've missed that deadline can make that election by March 15th of the following tax year. And that election will be approved, but it won't be retroactive um, on, for the previous tax year, it will be effective in the year that that election is effective. So looking at this chart here, a C corporation, just again, to give you a brief, brief review, it's owned by shareholders, run by an elected board of directors, owners are often shielded from personal liability because with a C corp, you get the maximum amount of asset protection, liability protection, but with a C corporation, again, you're subject to double taxation, meaning once being taxed at the corporate level, once being taxed when the shareholders receive a dividend from the corporation. And we don't typically recommend this type of corporation for a small business unless they are from the get-go trying to go public or seeking venture capital funding. Moving on to the S corporation, as I mentioned to you, a C corporation is really a C corp an S corporation is really a C corporation that elects pass through tax treatment with the IRS. There's strict requirements that you have to meet in order for the IRS to look at your C corp as a pass through tax entity as an S corporation. But in all other aspects, that corporation is a C corporation. So as far as liability asset protection, as far as formalities, um, as far as you know, anything that, uh, you know, is the foundation of that corporation is a C Corp, but now it's getting passed through tax treatment by being designated for tax status as an S corporation. And again, the S corporation is great for a small business owner that wants to, you know, be very, very active within their corporation, but they want the maximum amount of liability protection, asset protection. They don't mind the corporate formalities, but they want to be really, really involved with the corporation and they don't want to pay double taxation. They would opt for the S corporation as long as they qualify. But here's the caveat. If you are a shareholder of an S corporation, um, the shareholders have to place themselves on payroll and get and take a paycheck from that S corporation. 
And this is where the IRS is cracking down a lot these days. And it becomes a huge red flag with the IRS where it will really, really lead the pathway for your business to be flagged for an IRS audit. Because a lot of times people are, you know, electing S corporation status. And then at the, you know, shareholders of that S corporation, um, they're taking a minimal, minimal um, paycheck off their payroll and taking the majority of it as a draw um, in order to try to avoid paying high payroll taxes. And again, this leads to an, an opening uh, for you to open yourself up to an IRS audit. So if you're planning on setting up a business as a C-Corp with an S-Corp election, just keep in mind as the owners of that S corporation, the shareholders, the shareholders have to be on payroll and you have to take a reasonable salary as a paycheck from that S corporation. Moving on to the LLC. So the LLC is one of my favorite, favorite entities. What I like to refer to the LLC as is you get to have your cake and eat it too. Why? Because with the LLC, it combines elements of the sole proprietorship partnership with the benefits and the liability and asset protection of a corporation. Um, with an LLC, anyone can be a member of an LLC. With an LLC, it's a pass-through tax entity. So again, if you don't want those corporate formalities that often go with a C-Corp or an S-Corp, you want a separate legal entity for your business, and you want minimal, minimal, minimal formalities, the LLC is the best way to go. Why? Because again, it gives you all the liability protection, all the asset protection that a corporation or an S corporation would provide you without all the corporate formalities. It's less complex to run and manage. And there's only really one piece of document that controls that LLC, which is called the LLC operating agreement. Now, LLCs can be owned by multiple people you can have as many members within an LLC. Um, and this is why I love the LLC, because not only um, you can you know, have multiple members, not only anyone can be a member of an LLC, but an LLC can also be taxed and there's tax flexibility with the LLC. So by default, if it's a single member LLC, it's a disregarded entity. As a single member LLC, by default, you're taxed as a sole proprietorship. So that's where the pass-through tax treatment comes in, is that if you form an LLC, by default, unless you elect for the LLC to be taxed as a C-Corp or an S-Corp, that LLC by default with one member is taxed as a sole proprietorship, meaning that all the profits and losses are uh, reported on the individual member's tax returns, okay? again. With a partnership, if it's two or more people, that LLC in all other aspects would provide you with liability and asset protection. But by default, as far as taxation goes, it's taxed as a partnership. However, here's the beauty of the LLC. You as the member of an LLC or as members of an LLC have the choice of having that LLC taxed as a C corporation or an LLC. Now, you'll ask Nelly, why would I want to do that? Well, in certain um, situations, for example, let's say um, you uh, are a out-of-state resident and you're not a citizen of the U.S., okay? But you want to uh, not be subject to higher self-employment taxes because keep in mind, as an LLC by default, if you're a single-member LLC, you're taxed as a sole proprietorship, meaning you're having to pay higher self-employment taxes. Why? Because in general and by default, LLCs cannot place themselves, members of an LLC, the owners of an LLC cannot place themselves on payroll. They cannot become employees of that LLC. By default, you can only take a draw from the LLC. What does that mean? That means you're likely going to have to pay higher self-employment taxes, okay? But let's say I'm a business owner who not only I'm, I'm a citizen or a resident of the US, okay? 
And I don't want to deal with the headache and the administration of uh, corporations, okay? And I don't want to be an S corp again for that same purpose of, you know, corporate formalities. So I decide I want to set up an LLC, okay? Because I like that less, less complexity and I want that ease of not having to have a lot of paperwork and administration. But I don't want to pay high uh, self-employment taxes and I don't want to take a drop. Well, that LLC, if it meets the requirements, can qualify as an S-corp for tax purposes. So that LLC can now elect S-corporation for its tax purposes, okay? Similarly, let's say that same situation, I can't qualify for an S-corporation because I don't meet the requirements of the S-corp, okay? But I still want to be an LLC and I need to be on payroll because the corporate tax rate, the C-corp tax rate of 21% is more beneficial to me and I don't want to be taxed with higher self-employment taxes as a member so I can elect C-corp status. So with the LLC, listen guys, there's a lot of stuff and I see a lot of questions coming in. This is a very, very, very big, I can go on and on for one hour just on LLCs, you know? So I know you guys have a lot of questions and we'll try to answer them. You can always reach out to me to info at corpnet.com with your inquiry and I'll be more than happy to answer all of your inquiries. So this is a very general, um, you know, explanation of all these different business entities. And I know everyone has a lot of questions, but at the end of the day, the beauty of the LLC is that it's very flexible, both as to how it can be set up, how it can be taxed. Also, there's different types of LLCs. You have by default, when you form an LLC, it's member managed, but it could also be manager managed. Now, what's the difference? By default, when you set up an LLC, it's always member managed, meaning all the members manage equally. However, you can also have a manager managed LLC whereby there's certain people who are managing the LLC and more involved. And some of them are just sitting back at mem mem as members of an LLC. Um, there's also something called series LLCs um, that are recognized by certain states. But again, at the end of the day, the LLC is the most popular business structure for a small business owner who wants the formalities, who wants the asset protection, but doesn't want to deal with all the headache and all the paperwork. And there's also tax flexibility. This slide basically recaps the different um, types of business entities as I've explained them here. And um, we can go on to the next slide, whereby we're gonna, you know, I've also explained here for you as to the C Corp, S Corp, LLC, and giving you a brief overview of, you know, what is required as far as initial filing requirements, annual compliance requirements, and also the requirement of a registered agent within the state that you're trying to set up that business entity within. As you can see with the C Corp S Corp, you know, to bring that C Corp S Corp into existence, you have to file what are called articles of incorporation to actually establish that corporation. And then at some states you'll re, uh, you're required to have some sort of initial filing after the formation. Some states will require publication. Other states um, will require even more, fili more filings. Um, if you want to do the S Corp, there's an additional filing with the IRS. So I've laid out the initial fi filing requirements based on each business entity. I've also laid out the annual compliance requirements for each entity. As you can see with a C Corp and an S Corporation, regardless of how many people you have in that corporation, okay? Because remember, you can set up a corporation as a single man corporation and you can be the sole shareholder, you can be all of the officers, you can be and the sole director. But even with a single person C Corp or an S Corp, you'll have to comply with corporate formalities, which means you have to have and draft annual meeting minutes on a yearly basis. Whereas with an LLC, that's not the case. The single piece of document that you know controls that LLC is the LLC operating agreement. Now, for all three types of business entities, 
you are rec required to designate a registered agent for that corporation or LLC within the state that that corporation or LLC is being set up. Now, what is a registered agent? A registered agent is a person over the age of majority in most states 18 years or older that has a physical presence, a physical address, no private mailbox, no post office within the state that the corporation is being set up in that is going to be at the place of business between the hours of 8 to 5 p.m. daily, accepting on behalf of that corporation or LLC service of process, legal filings, state documents on behalf of that corporation or LLC. If you do not designate a registered agent for your corporation or LLC within the Articles of Incorporation or Organization, the state will not accept that filing. If you don't maintain one throughout the years that the corporation or LLC is in existence, the corporation will admit, uh, the Secretary of State will administratively dissolve your corporation or LLC, or they will put your corporation or LLC in bad standing. So registered agent is a requirement um, and as a prerequisite to setting up a corporation or LLC in any state. And again, you can choose a commercial registered agent such as a company like our company CorpNet to act as your registered agent in any of the 50 states. Why is that beneficial to you? The reason being is that why are you setting up a corporation or LLC in the first place to protect yourself? One of the reasons is privacy, added layer of privacy. So with that, and by designating a commercial agent such as CorpNet, it will give you even more layers of privacy. With that, moving on. And uh, let me just break in here. Um, uh, one uh, clarification question. So you're saying here then, Nellie, that with the LLC, there's a lot less paperwork. You don't have to do these annual meetings and meeting minutes and, and all of that as you would with a, a corporation. Right. Um, yet you're getting this, this liability protection. So that's like the key, that's kind of like a key thing, right? It's a very, very big differentiator because a lot of business owners, especially as they're st starting out and starting small, they want that asset protection um, and then, you know, they want this, they want the asset protection, yet they want that simplicity. And keep in mind, I saw a question come through, you know, you can always start off as an LLC and then later on down the line, if you feel that the business changes needs, you can always convert out of an LLC into a C corporation. So just because you're starting out as one form of business entity doesn't mean that you can't always change that business entity later down the line. So you can always convert out and, um, but in answer to your question, Anita, yes, it really boils down to formalities. If you want that simplicity of not having a lot of formalities and still getting that liability asset protection, the LLC is the best way to go. And then another question that often comes up is, well, let's say I do set up an LLC, but because I want to, you know, you know, I want to uh, basically, you know, evade having to pay higher self-employment taxes and um, not take a draw. I want to put myself on payroll. I elect S corporation status or C corporation status. Now that for tax purposes, I'm an S corp or a C corp, do I now have to file annual meeting minutes? And the answer to that question is no, because again, the foundation of that entity is an LLC. And an LLC, although we recommend you to listen, there is no um, prevention on a business owner's part if they want to file annual meeting minutes or you know draft corporate resolutions, but an LLC does not have that requirement and you're not required to have annual meeting minutes. The only thing that the LLC um, must comply with is having a operating agreement that's updated as there's changes within the LLC. And then in most states, you're required to file what is called annual statement of information, also referred to as an annual report, which is a state mandatory requirement that you have to comply with if you want that LLC to remain in compliance with state laws. 
if you fail to file that annual report timely within your state as it's required by your state, then again, that Secretary of State will administratively dissolve your LLC. They will also tack on penalties and late fees, and they can even put your company in bad standing. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's dig into the tax advantages here. On that note, um, yeah. so tax advantages. You know, I've kind of covered it as, uh, but we're going to go into it a little bit more. Uh, deeper here. So we're going to be ta talking about tax advantages of C-Corps, S-Corps, LLCs. As I mentioned to you with the C-Corporation, um, C-Corps are doubly taxed. So there's double taxation. Now, corporate income tax rate may be favorable here. A C-Corps profits get taxed at the corporate income tax rate. In some circumstances, that might work in the business owner's favor. In others, it may not. So depending on where your business is located, depending on where uh, the shareholders of that business are situated, they might find that the corporate tax rate will cost them less than if they were, for example, set up as an LLC or an S corporation. Um, in addition, possibly more tax opportunities. As a C corp, the business may be eligible for more tax deductions, um, whereas you may not be as an LLC partnership or a sole proprietorship. Lastly, with the C corporation, there is that S corporation option for qualifying C corporations where at, whereby eligible C corps may be taxed as an S corp, enabling them to avoid that sting of double taxation. But all in all, at the end of the day, right now, C corps have been reduced as a result of that tax uh, cuts jobs act from 35% to a flat 21%. And um, now C corps are taxed flat at a 21%. But again, the disadvantage of C corporations, if you're a small business owner, it's that double tax hit. A C corporation's profits are taxed when they're earned. And then any profit that's paid as dividend income to the shareholders is taxed again on that shareholder's individual tax rate on their individual tax return. Moving on to the S corporation, again, S corporation, great for a small business owner who wants to be super active in their company, wants to reinvest their profits into their company, but they don't want that double tax uh, sting. So it lessens that self-employment self tax burden on LLC members because with an S corporation, if you're an LLC, um, again, by default, LLCs cannot be employees of their LLC. So the only way they can avoid paying that higher self-employment tax is by electing S-Corp status. Um, and then as an, S as an LLC taxed as an S-Corp, they can put themselves as employees of the LLC and take a paycheck from that LLC, which again, lowers their personal tax burden. It also, as we've talked about here, is S-Corporation enables C-Corporations that qualify and when I say C corporations that qualify, I'm talking about who are the shareholders of that corporation and they have to meet the requirements of that S corporation in order to be able to qualify. But again, the S corporation enables C corporations to avoid that double taxation. Okay, now what are the disadvantages? The disadvantages of the S corporation and taxes is that there is this potential that with an S corp, you're limiting growth, okay? But again, there is nothing um, preventing you from going back to a C corp. So let's say you start out, you start out as an S corporation, you qualify, you start out as an S corporation, but then your business is getting really big and you need to bring on more shareholders over and above a hundred. You can cancel that S corporation with the IRS and now transfer and convert back to a C corp. If you do that, you can't reelect S corporation status for five years. So there is a five year waiting period um, after you cancel your S corp status with the IRS for them to allow you to reelect S corp status. However, um, you know, all in all, at the end of the day, in general, the disadvantages with S corporation is that there may be a limitation on your growth potential. Why? Because you can't have more than 100 shareholders. 
within that S Corp. You can't have um, different classes of stock within an S Corp. And then also there is this reasonable compensation key. So again, if you're a small business owner trying to, you know, do a, you know, a, 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 you know, a, a fat, something quick behind the IRS, you can't, you know, because you can't pull a fast one on the IRS, okay? If you're trying to elect S corporation status and you qualify, you have to, as a shareholder, put yourself on payroll and take a reasonable salary out of that corporation. If you don't, and if you take like, let's say a $5,000 salary, you know, as a key shareholder within that corporation, whereas really your reasonable salary should be like 10 or $15,000 a month. And you're doing that because you're trying to avoid paying higher payroll taxes. That's going to be a flag for the IRS. And it can potentially open up and flag you for an audit with the IRS. Okay. Now, the other one is the fact that S corporations are not treated equally at the state level. It varies state by state. So that may also be a disadvantage for some business owners. Moving on, limited liability companies. We've talked about this. Um, with limited liability companies, um, by default, you're taxed as a sole prop. If you're a single member, multi-member LLCs, by default, are taxed as uh, partnerships. Uh, with an LLC, there is the benefit and flexibility of LLC members opting uh, to be taxed as an S-Corp if they meet the S Corp requirements. And also the beauty of the LLC is that you as an owner of an LLC can also choose how to distribute profits. So LLC members may choose how their business will divide companies profits and losses amongst its members. And it doesn't have to be in relation to how much that member or owner owns as you know, their share within the LLC. So sometimes, you know, owners may consider not only to you know, invest money, but time and work can be invested uh, as sweat equity within the LLC. So lots of flexibility and lots of um, tax advantages um, within the LLC and also how you can be taxed. Now, by default, as we've talked about here, the big disadvantage with an LLC is that by default, because you're being taxed as a sole prop or partnership, there's that bigger self-employment tax burden. Why? Because LLCs are pass-through tax entities. So all of an LLC's business profits are subject to social security and Medicare taxes. And again, this may create an unfavorable situation for LLC owners as they may have to pay higher self-employment taxes on their distributive share of the LLC's profits, even if invested back into the business. And the other thing is that as a result, and because of this, members of an LLC cannot be employees of an LLC. They can only take a draw, thereby this is why you have this bigger self-employment tax burden. Moving on to the next slide, let's talk about the Tax Cut and the Jobs Act, which God knows what's gonna happen to that these days. Um, so let's talk about the TCJA effect on business entities. Now, when, when this came out, and, and I believe it was in um, uh, a couple of, three, four years ago, it made tax law changes that affected every business and different types of business entities. Specifically, it affected C corporations. Corporations and pass through tax business entities have the most tax savings potential under this tax cut and jobs act okay specifically moving on to the next slide let's talk about the changes for corporations so corporations feel the biggest impact from this uh, act primarily in a positive way in that c corporations as i've been talking to you are now taxed at a flat rate of 21 percent including personal service companies you're no longer required to calculate the alternate minimum tax rates. However, they may be able to use that alternative minimum tax credit carryovers until this year. Um, and you're still partially allowed to deduct dividends. Moving on, as far as um, the changes for other types of pass-through business entities, um, as you can see here, taxable income from sole props, partnerships, S-corps, and LLCs were simply 
pass through to owners and tax at those individual standard rates. Under the TCJA, pass-through businesses will still be taxed at individual rates minus that 20% deduction. The deduction was created to lower the tax rate for these non-corporation businesses, but there are exceptions and stipulations. So again, uh, for my purpose, I am not a tax expert and I highly recommend you to consult with your accountant as it relates to your particular situation and what business entity will be the most tax advantage to you. But all in all, um, the TCJA Act has been beneficial as it relates to corporations, especially to C corporations. Moving on to the next slide. So let's talk about selecting an ideal business entity and what business entity is best for you. You want to ask yourself this, these types of questions. Do I have any personal assets? Am I going to acquire any personal assets within the next 22 years? Most likely, yes. Are you concerned about personal liability? I think everybody should be concerned about personal liability, no matter how small <laughs> your business is, because we live in a very litigious world. Again, you know, I'm an attorney. I don't practice law. I am not a licensed attorney. One of the reasons I don't do that because I, I, I don't like conflict, you know, and hence why I love being an entrepreneur. But even with an as an entrepreneur, we live in a very litigious world and I'll take every step to protect myself as a business owner. Um, other questions you wanna ask is, do you need to live off the business's profits each year? Do you want to keep paperwork and administration as simple as possible? And do you wanna keep that business forever? These questions will lead you to, you know, picking and choosing that right business entity for your business. Now, for those of you who need more help, we have a great tool at CorpNet called our Business Structure Wizard, which will allow you to, uh, and will guide you to um, recommending the best business structure for your business entity. It's a wizard. So if you haven't used it, use it. Use it and you'll love it. And it really, it's been created by attorneys and accountants and will, it will help guide you through what business entity is um, the best for you and your business. Um, now let's talk about self-employment and the self-employees currently. The self-employment tax rate is at a 15.3%, which includes 12.4% social security tax and 2.9% Medicare tax. Now, why am I bringing this up is because if you're a self-employed operating your business as a sole proprietor, or a partnership, um, you wanna ask yourself, well, if I considered becoming a corporation, how can an S corporation help me? And if I considered I didn't wanna be a corporation, but I wanna be an LLC, how can an LLC help me? And I've list all of the different you know, bullet points here for you. Again, as an S corp, uh, and you know, if, if, if you're an if, if, you're an, if you decide to elect S corporation, become a C corp and elect S corp and meet the qualifications of the S corporation, you have the potential to save substantial amount of taxes, okay? Similarly with an LLC, um, but with the LLC, again, you get that benefit of not only potential tax savings, but less paperwork administration and still the same amount of liability asset Moving on to the next uh, phase. Now, a lot of people ask me, how do I start, okay? Well, you gotta find out which state you wanna operate in. By default, you want to set up that corporation or LLC within the state that your business is located, where you're located, where the employees are located. Uh, it's, listen, there is corporate friendly states such as Delaware, Nevada, and Wyoming. At the end of the day, it's a myth. If you're operating in California and your business is located in California, you cannot bypass the California franchise tax of $800 by incorporating in Delaware. Because guess what? If you incorporate in Delaware, Wyoming, or Nevada, but you're operating in California, California law is going to apply. California is going to hit you with your taxes. Now what you've done is subject yourself to two states filing fees, filing requirements, compliance requirements. So at the end of the day, rule of thumb, incorporate in your home state. What does that mean to you? 
incorporate in the state that you're physically located in, you're transacting business in, your employees are located in, the, the offices are located in, you do anything else, you're gonna get hit with multiple states tax filings, laws, and rules. And at the end of the day, the state that you're actually physically located in is going to require you to now file within that state as a foreign entity. So incorporate within your home state. That's it, okay? I write a lot about this. Steps to incorporate a business, okay? I've listed it out here for you, pretty straightforward. I've listed it out in detail. First and foremost, come up with a name, make sure that name is available, designate a registered agent. We got to draft articles of incorporation, file those articles within the state and the list goes on. Can we do this all for you and more? Absolutely. Do we recommend to do it all for you? Absolutely, why? Because you should be focusing on doing what's best for your business, which is growing that business and leaving that paperwork and hassle to people who are experts at it. Because yes, you can do it on your own. You can go to the Secretary of State and do all of this on your own. And more likelihood is you're gonna run into road bumps, you're gonna run into bottlenecks, and it's likely gonna take longer than if you had a reputable filing company such as our company handle all of this and more for you. Um, next one is how to steps to uh, form a limited liability company. Same exact, uh, you know, steps as it relates to corporations. A little bit different, but again, choose a name, designate a registered agent, draft the articles, file them with the state. Make sure you apply for the tax ID number, whether you're a corporation or LLC. Why? Because the tax ID is just like a social security. When you bring a corporation or LLC into existence, it's like giving birth to a baby. That baby needs a social security number. The LLC and the corporation need a tax ID number because that's the way the IRS will uh, recognize that corporation or LLC with its corporate transactions. Moving on, steps to elect S corporation status. Again, I've listed it out here for you. Whether you're a corporation or LLC, if you meet those requirements, as a C corporation, you file by filing form 80, if, by filing form 2553 to elect S corporation status. Similarly, LLCs who wanna elect S corp status file 2553, as long as you meet all of the requirements. Now, if you're an LLC wanting to be taxed as a C corporation, you submit and file what is called IRS form 8832 signed by all the members with the uh, IRS. Um, helpful resources, and I know I have two minutes here. CorpNet is here at your service, ready to assist you in any and all of the 50 states. We have a plethora, and I mean a plethora of resources at your fingertips. You need to check that name for availability. The name is always the most exciting part of starting a business. So if you wanna check that name to see if it's available, we have a free corporate name search tool. Um, if you wanna help register the business in any of the 50 states, we're here at your service. If you don't know what type of business entity you wanna choose and you want guidance, you can come onto our site and take a tour of our business structure wizard. If you already have an existing corporation and you want to keep that corporation in compliance, we have free meeting minute templates that you can download and draft your own meeting minute templates or take the next step and let us handle all of it for you for a minimal service fee. We also have an amazing blog that, in fact, I have the honor of Anita sometimes contributing when she's not busy. And um, our blog is named top 15 in the nation as far as one of the top business blogs. So anything and everything you have questions on, you can always come to the blog and get your answers to. And if you don't see something on the blog, you can always send me an email and I can write about it for you. Moving on to the next slide, we also have an amazing partner program. Now, this is something that we launched about three to four years ago. So 
let's say you're a business owner, but you're also a business coach, business consultant, an attorney, a CPA, um, anyone who represents other clients, you can even partner with us and start offering our services to your clients. Um, free, you know, and, and, and by joining with us, it's free of charge. We do not charge you a subscription fee. We do not charge you a setup fee. We do not charge you an annual fee. It's a pay as you go service, but it's a way for you to start using our services for your clients. And the benefit of that is now your clients get to have, uh, you know, at, at someone who's their trusted resource when it comes to incorporation, business filing services, business compliance. Um, our services are very in-depth. We provide any type of business filing service, including sales tax registrations, payroll tax registrations. Let's say you're a business who's now expanding into another state and you have employees in that state and you need to register for payroll we can help you with all of those filings and more. We are a one-stop shop when it comes to anything and everything, business filings and helping you start a business, run a business, manage a business, keeping a business in compliance, expand a business, all the way down to closing a business entity. Um, we have an amazing plethora of information for you. And we're at 12.02. I just wanna thank you again for this amazing opportunity. It has been such a pleasure presenting to all of you. And Anita, I really wanna thank you for this opportunity. I really had a blast presenting here. I don't know what it was today. I just feel this energy and you know, it gets me going. Well, this has been great. It's absolutely wonderful. And you are just like a gold mine of information. I mean, we could just be drilling down uh, do you have just a couple more minutes for just a couple questions? Uh, I, have like to get all, to I have all the time in the world. I'm just trying to, you know, comply with your timing. But I see Rochelle Clooney here. Thank you so much, Rochelle, for your amazing feedback. It's been a pleasure presenting. And I'm so happy that you found this so worthwhile. Yes, absolutely. Um, so one of the questions, this has come in uh, in several forms. Uh, and I know you talked a lot about it, but maybe you could just drill down a little bit about double taxation for corporations. So there appears to be like a, a little bit of confusion. Like, what do you mean by double taxation? Who is being taxed double? Uh, and are you talking about the owner or the corporation? What is it? Okay, so great question. And by, so by definition, when the corporation is being set up, okay, um, and I, I like to use examples. So let's say I want to set up a corporation, okay, and I am the business owner, but I want asset protection, I want liability protection, um, so, and, and I can't qualify for S corporation status. So what I do is I form a C corporation, and the reason why is because I want that maximum amount of liability asset protection. As a C corporation, the C corporation is now a legal entity on its own, okay? And although it's a legal entity on its own, I am the owner of that corporation. Although the owner is not now Nelly Acalp, it's basically I'm a owner by being a shareholder of that corporation. So when we talk about double taxation, what we're talking about here is that the corporation by being a C corporation is subject to double taxation, meaning the corporation will pay taxes on the corporate level when the corporation reports profits. And then when the corporation has profits and there's profits remaining that the corporation is going to be distributing out as dividend to the shareholders, in this case, being one shareholder myself, I have to pay again taxes on that portion that I receive as a distribution from that corporation on my individual taxes. So the corporation is being taxed once at the corporate level. And then once the corporation is paying out a distribution to me as a shareholder of that corporation, 
me as an individual shareholder of that corporation have to pay taxes again. And I'm being taxed on it again on my individual taxes, thereby the concept of double taxation. Excellent. Okay. Now here's a question about registered agent. And I think you touched on this on the privacy uh, part of it. So by having a registered agent through CorpNet or some other service, that means I don't have to put my personal address in as the registered agent, I guess, as, a, as the owner. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And oftentimes, this is a step that a lot of clients, um, you know, have questions about, but really at the end of the day, think about it. One of the reasons why you're setting up a corporation or an LLC is because not only you want to protect yourself from liability and asset protection, but another big reason is you want to create that privacy. You want to create the layers of protection so that God forbid people are not coming after you personally. And again, by it's like you're it's, you're shooting yourself in the foot by naming yourself as the registered agent with your own address because a lot of small business owners as we see it they'll designate themselves with their home address as the registered agent and then they call us up after the corporation is set up and they're like nelly why am i getting all this mail why am i getting people coming up to my doorstep well because you designated yourself as the registered agent that's why CorpNet provides registered agent services in all the 50 states. Why do we do this? Because we want to protect you and we want to be that person um, that's preventing anything from coming to you personally so that we can accept uh, service of process on behalf of that corporation or LLC. We also provide business address services in all 50 states. So let's say, you know, you're a business that's really operating out of your home. You know, you're a business consultant and you're operating out of your one bedroom apartment. And, um, you know, you want that liability protection. You want to form a corporation or LLC, but you don't want anybody to know, you know, where you're operating from. And you want to give that impression of, you know, a, a a formal business, you know, you can not only designate us as the registered agent, but you, we can also provide you with business address services in all 50 states. Oh, okay. That's great. I didn't know that. Huh. Okay. Uh, here's another question. Uh, you've talked about self-employment tax and how uh, it's helpful to minimize that why does that matter? Don't you still have to pay taxes as the owner? Um, so maybe uh, that seems to be a misunderstanding perhaps as to what self-employment tax is and that it's a different rate. Maybe you could talk about that. Sure, absolutely. So again, by default, when you're setting up a business, let's say you know I'm setting up a business and I wanna put up shop tomorrow and I don't wanna incorporate or set up an LLC. Okay, by default, if I start doing business under, let's say, Nellie's Cupcakes, and I start baking cupcakes, you know, I deliver those cupcakes, I get a fee for providing those cupcakes, I, you know, deposit that money into my bank account, um, the IRS is going to look at me as a sole proprietor. Why? Because I'm now doing business for a profit. Um, you know, and those profits are going into my bank account. Hopefully, you would have a separate bank account now set up, but the IRS is going to tax you on any income that you earn, okay? And typically, for a sole proprietor, that income is reported on your Schedule C of your individual tax returns, and it's subject to the individual tax rates, okay? Now, let's say me, as a small business owner, because I'm baking cupcakes, there's that likelihood that, God forbid, somebody's gonna get sick, okay? And somebody gets sick, they sue me, they get a judgment against me. If I was a sole proprietor, they can come after me personally, come after my house, my car, my savings account, my retirement account, anything. As a corporation or an LLC, I'm shielded. There's like this balloon around me where that God forbid, if they sued me, they can go after only the to the extent of whatever assets and monies are in that corporation or LLC. 
Now, if I was an LLC, okay, and let's say, you know, I'm setting up an LLC for this bakery business that I'm in. As an LLC, if I'm one person, by default, if I do not elect to be taxed as an S corp or a C corp, by default, because that LLC by default is a pass through tax entity, by default, that LLC with me being the sole member is taxed as a sole proprietorship. Again, if that LLC is accepting income, that income is going to be taxed at my self-employment tax rate, the same rate that I would pay if I was simply a sole proprietor. So that's what we're talking about here. In addition, what we're saying here is that as a single member LLC or a multi-member LLC, by default, because you're being taxed as a sole proprietor or a partnership, you cannot be employees of that LLC. In order to be employee of that LLC, you have to elect to even either become a C Corp or an S Corporation. Why? You would do that because you don't want to pay those higher self-employment taxes. Because if you don't elect S Corp or C Corp, you can't take a paycheck. You can only take a draw from that LLC. As taking a draw from that LLC, again, is considered income to you as an individual, thereby requiring you to pay self-employment taxes as you would as a sole proprietor or partnership. So how do you avoid this? As an LLC, you can opt and elect to be taxed as an S Corp or a C Corp, avoiding having to take a draw because now as a C Corp or an S Corp, you can place yourself as a member of an LLC on payroll and take a paycheck. So you actually have to set up an actual payroll and uh, pay in with tax withholdings and so on as you normally would for any employee. Right. Um, but once you can do that as an owner, if you've become a, a, a subchapter S, right? Correct, correct. So, okay. as a, so as a subchapter S, if your LLC meets the requirements of yes. that subchapter S, and the IRS approves your LLC and looks at that LLC for tax purposes as an S Corp, members of that LLC can now register themselves on payroll and take a paycheck out of the LLC. But keep in mind, again, you can't simply do this to avoid paying higher self-employment taxes. You have to take a reasonable salary because this is one area where the IRS is uh, you know, catching on and um, flagging corporations and LLCs for audits. Okay, well, uh, Nelly, thank you. I think we have pretty much run out of time. I know there are other questions and I'm sorry we can't get to them all, but I don't want to keep Nelly here and everybody else here all afternoon. And I did want to uh, just um, mention one thing that Nelly has very kindly made a 10% discount available to those watching this event today. So thank you, Nelly, from the bottom of my heart. And uh, actually, you can go to a page that we've set up if you want to. This is a short link. It's sbt.me slash dok. That's just a shortened link, uh, sbt.me slash dok. Uh, if you go through there, through that link, um, that we would appreciate it very much. But you're going to have to use the discount code SMBT10. So do you see that discount code there? Jot that down, SMBT10. When you're checking out, you'll get the 10% discount. Thank you for that very much, Nellie. Of course. And just to piggyback off of what Anita is saying, for those of you who have more questions and you know need more guidance, again, feel free to visit us at www.corpnet.com. You can come to us through the SMBT, uh, to, through the Small Business Trends website. You can simply also pick up the phone and let us know that you're calling from uh, Small Business Trends. You can either ask for myself, Amanda Barron, um, Layla Bolton, or Ashley Jones in our office. Uh, we have a crew of people that are dedicated 
to this partnership with Anita Campbell and Small Business Trends. Again, you can reach out to us. Let us know that you are coming to us from Small Business Trends. We will apply the 10% even on a phone order. And we have a dedicated crew that's associated to Anita Campbell and the Small Business Trends audience. Again, ask for Amanda Barron, Ashley Jones, Layla Bolton, myself. We're all here at your service. We wish you guys all the best in all of your business endeavors. And if you're a small business owner considering to incorporate, get it done, get it done fast. And you need to make sure your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed when it comes to running a small business. And we wish you the best. Thank you very much, Nellie. Thank you everyone for participating today. And that concludes today's session.